We're about to show you a side of sugar that's not so sweet. It involves a trove of secret documents uncovered in the United States exposing tactics used over several decades to manipulate public opinion. Kelly Crow has been pulling back the curtain on the food industry this week. Tonight, the big sell on sugar. Which is less fattening, sugar or an apple? According to this ad, paid for by the sugar industry back in 1953, it's sugar. More vintage diet advice? Enjoy an ice cream cone before lunch. It could help you undereat at mealtime. That's the industry promoting sugar in plain sight. But behind the scenes, there was another secret campaign to promote a healthy image for sugar. So the first document I saw was a confidential Sugar Association memo talking about their public relations strategy in the 1970s. Kristen Cousins discovered the documents here at this public library in Colorado, files from a bankrupt sugar company. The documents reveal a campaign to kill media stories critical of sugar, including one in Reader's Digest. We took our case to the editor-in-chief, the sugar executives announced. We were able to persuade them to cancel the story. Another document talks about the industry's desire to maintain research as a main prop of the industry's defense including efforts to fight dietary guidelines that were being developed by a U.S. Senate committee in 1977. The report has to be neutralized, they warned. The consequences of losing this battle are too grave to be taken lightly. For this health policy researcher, it echoes the tactics of big tobacco. The Sugar Association uses many of the same tactics used by other industries when they're trying to put profits before health. When Cousins asked the sugar industry for a reaction, they dismissed the documents. But then she found something more recent, this internal Sugar Association e-newsletter that said any disparagement of sugar will be met with forceful strategic public comments and the supporting science. Well, we were able to find some documents from 2003 that showed us that the sugar industry is very active in nominating scientists to serve on the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee, and they still are publishing research through their connections with the World Sugar Research Organization. When we asked the Canadian Sugar Institute about all of this, they chose not to comment on the documents, but instead sent us this, what they called a scientific consensus that concludes there is no evidence of harm at current sugar consumption levels. As for the original documents, the Great Western Sugar Company went out of business decades ago, and many of the people named in those documents have died. Kelly Crow, CBC News, Toronto.